Okay, so let's show you how easy this is to change these handlebars. It's a lot of work, but it's nothing very hard. But what you want to do is kind of be organized because some of it, well, most of it, you have to do it in certain steps or you'll get, you know, it'll, it'll become a lot harder of a job. So the first thing you're going to want to do is remove this panel. So this panel, I think most of you know it, you just kind of get your fingers under there and pull it off. It lifts right off. It has the little push pins where the things go. You just snap it off. So take that off, that out of the way. Next thing is the bezel, the dash bezel on the speedometer. And again, just get your fingers, I get it in here kind of, wherever you can get so you can pull it. And it's kind of hard. It just snaps in so it'll pop out, but it's kind of hard. There you go, you just pop that out. And you can see on the back here, there's just these little clips. That goes in the hole and it just, like a spring clip, it just pushes on. So you want to set that stuff away. Take your key out, get that out of the way. Now you have down here in the bottom, you have two bolts, Allen head bolts, or six millimeter Allen head bolts, and you also have up in the top by the speedometer, you have two bolts up here. You want to get those bolts out and that's going to help you get this panel out of the way. So again, they're six millimeter Allen, they're not in tight or anything. You might want to get like a little bag, a little sandwich bag or something and put your bolts in so you don't lose them. Watch you don't break this wire here. And you can label your sandwich bag, you know, dash bolts or, or switch housing bolts or you know, whatever so that you don't lose them. There's also down in here, there's a little Phillips head screw. So you want to make sure you get that Phillips head screw out of there. And then this dash panel will actually lift off. Now, you don't have to take it all the way off. All your switches and wiring are on here. All that stuff's in the back here. You don't really have to disconnect that. All you're trying to do is get to these two bolts right here. So you can kind of loosen that up and just set it back out of the way you don't have to mess with all that so that's one good thing the other thing is and I've already done it but on the handlebars here you have the little clips that hold the cables I've already pulled those clips off you can go ahead and cut them off it's really about the only way you get them out cut them off with a pair of side cutters or a knife when we give you when you buy our bars we give you new clips and the holes are already pre-drilled in our bars so you can just put the clips in so you don't need to reuse them so the next thing we're going to want to do is we're going to start messing with the switch housings and the master cylinder and all that. Now, again, none of it's hard. You want to use, the first step is to get the master cylinder out of the way. Uh, it's a five millimeter bolt and you have one here and there's one in the back side. So you just loosen those bolts. And you got to take them all the way out. Now one thing you might do is put a towel or something on here if you want to, to protect in case you drop any of this stuff, it doesn't hit your paint. So you know, get an old sheet or something and put it on there. And when that one's loose, you, you can kind of rotate this just a tiny bit to get, to get to the other screw here. There you go, and watch it doesn't fall. But that's, that does that. That takes your master cylinder off. Now, you can just kind of leave it hang there. And again, that's where you want to, you know, put a sheet or something on there. This bike we're going to paint, so it doesn't really matter, but it's easier to show you. But you take that off, 
and then your bottom clamp will come off. One thing that's a good idea whenever you take stuff like this apart, because you know the phone's going to ring or something's going to happen and you're not going to get right back to it. Just put it back together. Just put the screws back in there. That way when you go to put it back together, you know right where everything's at and how it goes. It's fresh in your memory. The other thing I always say too is if you think you're going to get lost or you won't remember, just take a picture. Use your phone, take a picture of everything kind of beforehand so you can see exactly what's going on. And you can go back uh, for reference and look at it. Now the other thing on a vision, the handlebar ends bolt on on most of these, so you want to just unscrew that. Takes a five, or I'm sorry, it's a four millimeter Allen bolt in the end, and the handlebar ends come off. Let's unbolt it, and it comes right off. Nothing hard to that at all. Is you need to get that off to get your grip off. Now, the next thing you want to do is if you have the controls here with the, the um, stereo controls and that, there's a Phillips screw right here. You want to take that Phillips screw out. Now your switch, um, the, pan, the control unit here won't come off because it goes through the bar, it won't come off, but what it lets you do is now you can get to the screws in the switch housing. If you didn't move this, you couldn't get to those screws underneath there. These are Phillips head screws. Pretty long screw. And then you have another one. This one's kind of tucked up in here. It's a little bit harder to see. And you can see now this switch housing, you know, it's starting to come loose. So you're, you know you're on the right track. Now once you get that screw out, you just kind of take this apart. Be careful because there's wires in there and stuff. But you just take that apart. It's kind of stuck on your grip. So you can see now this will slide. Because we took the end off the handlebar, this will slide. Now sometimes since you disconnected these wires, like I said before, cut that clip off or the wires will be too tight. If you can't get this to slide off, which most of them you can, but if you feel like it's pulling too tight, what you can do is leave it on there, and then when we go to take the handlebars off, when we unbolt the handlebars, when we unbolt them from up here, we can just move the handlebars around where we want, and the switches will come right off. But they do come off pretty easy. Now this is one, when you get this off, just be real careful, because you don't want to really, down inside here, you or your throttle cables right here. You really don't want to mess with those. They're not, they're not the worst thing to do, but it's, it's a little bit hard. Um, you know, if they come apart, then it's just an, an added headache. So put your switch housing back together. And just screw a bolt back in so that it holds everything together. Because I know this is kind of an intimidating thing for you guys. You know, you open that switch housing, you got all those wires in there and the throttle cables and all that. So you really don't want this falling apart. So just put that screw back in. And that'll hold everything good so you, you don't have anything falling apart. Now you can slide your stereo, um, uh, stereo switch panel. Now some of these, 
depending on where your cables go, are really hard to get off. So what you can do, you can do two things. You can either take it off when you take the handlebars off, because you, you, you can move the handlebars over, or if you look on the back side here, there's two little Phillips screws. You could take those Phillips screws off and nothing falls apart. And what this does, this gets the bracket off of the, the wiring part. So now you can just slide your bracket right off and just go right back and bolt the screws back on so you don't lose them. Same thing, you can, you know, when it's fresh in your mind, it's easy to do. If the phone rings, got to go in and eat supper or whatever, kids screaming, and you forget, just do it right now and you'll, you'll have no trouble whatsoever. And set that aside. So now you can see everything's off of here. Basically took probably less than 10 minutes to do that. It's real easy. So let's show you how to do the other side. Okay, so now we're going to do the left side. So just take your dash and kind of twist it out of the way there. Same thing if you want to put a sheet there. This bike has one of those little cruiser caddy deals for uh, uh, attachments. So this is a little different here on this bike, but it's still the same idea. You're going to have your two screws up in there. He's got kind of some adapter thing on here, so we got to get that off first, but it's the same thing. You would just take your screws out. And you can see how this loosens up now. So you can kind of jiggle it a little bit and turn it so it's easier for you to get to. There, we get that bracket out of the way. The same thing, this thing will just come right apart. And again, like I said before, just take your bolts and screw everything back together so you know right how it went. You don't have to really worry about fluid leaking out of these. I wouldn't leave them hanging upside down overnight. But, you know, for right now, fluid shouldn't leak out of there. So now we're down to the switch handle again. Do the same thing, unbolt the handlebar end. Comes right off. Take out these Phillips screws here. You can do the same thing now if you want on the back of this, on the back of this thing. Take those little Phillips screws out. So you don't have to mess with any wiring. Now, the one thing that's a little bit trickier on these, this has heated grips on it. So it might be a little hard to see, but you have to pull the rubber back right here. And there's screw down in there. Now on this bike it's a Torx head. On some other bikes I've seen it be an Allen head. But you got to peel that rubber down. And right here there's a screw. Because I know guys pull on this thing and they want to cut it off because on the regular victories these grips are like glued on. 
this one isn't. So you get in there with a screwdriver, there's a little tiny Torx head, which a lot of people call star head, but you got to have a Torx screwdriver or socket to get that out. Just a little tiny bolt in there. But that will allow you to pull your grip off. Okay? So you can do that. Make sure you don't lose those screws. So that's basically how you get the grip off. Then you're just going to do the same thing again under here. You got the, the screws. Split the housing, get it basically real loose, take it right off, your bracket comes right off. You just put your screws back in so you don't lose them. Nothing will fall apart. You know, just be real careful. Don't pinch the wires or anything. Don't break them. But it comes right off. So that's basically how you get all the controls off. It's nothing harder than that. So the next thing we're going to show you is how to actually remove the handlebars. So what it is, is down inside here you have two bolts. So we'll come right back in a second and show you how to take that off. Okay, so we're going to show you how to take these bolts out here next. These bolts are either a 5 8 or a 16 depending what you have they'll work either way so if you don't have a 16 kind of an oddball in metric size a 5 8 will work now there's just a nut it's just a bolt that goes down through with a nut on the back so the nut on the back is like a 19 so the problem is everybody has a nightmare getting this off because they try to reach up underneath with an extension and a wrench and all that here's what I use it's a stubby um, gear wrench you can buy them at Harbor Freight, they're not a lot of money, 19 millimeter. You can take an old box end wrench and cut it off and make something stubby if you want. But if you don't do this, it's going to be really hard. The other thing is, you want to make sure you turn the handlebars. We have the handlebars turned all this way. That's going to give you a lot more room to reach underneath there. If you had it, if you can look on this side, if we were trying to do that under there, you know, you, you would have a lot of kind of hard to get to. So you can see it gives you a lot of space on this side and a lot of space on this side. So all you do, just it's just a nut and bolt. Reach under there and you got a lot of cables and you know stuff like that kind of in the way. And if you have a helper where you can hold the wrench, that'll help because these are pretty tight. And just reach under there and unscrew it. Okay, so it's a bolt and underneath is a, a washer and a lock nut. So put that back together so you don't lose it. And you do basically the same thing on this side. Reach under there, get on that nut. And since it's a lock nut, a lot of times it cranks hard for a long way. Then you can feel it when it gets going easier. Now, what you want to be careful, your bars are loose now, okay? So you want to, if you got a helper, you know, have somebody hold that bar so when you take that bolt out, they don't fall. Because these things are pretty heavy. They're a pretty beefy bar. So if you don't have enough hands or 
you know you, you don't feel comfortable doing it you can pull the bar I have it kind of resting on my stomach here take that bolt out and just take the bars right out they come right out so it's not that big a job you can see this isn't a big job to scare you away it looks like it but it really isn't so you're going to take these bars set them aside and then we'll show you how to install our bars